Is autism associated with super geniuses or intellectual disability? Stay tuned. I'm mad right now. I was casually thumbing through this college textbook on behavioral neuroscience, you know, as one does, and I came to the chapter on intelligence, which has a section on intellectual disabilities. I was caught off guard when there was a section heading labeled autism in that section. The problem is autism is not an intellectual disability. If that's the case, how could this college textbook, which is currently in use, have gotten it so wrong? That's what we're talking about today. What do autism and intelligence have to do with each other? As a quick note about what we mean by intelligence, we're talking about general intelligence, G, or what people usually mean when they measure IQ scores. If you'd like a brush up on conceptions of intelligence, check out some of our other videos on our channel. Shameless plug. So what is autism anyway? Well, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the DSM, which is the big book of mental disorders, characterizes autistic spectrum disorder as a developmental disorder in which an individual shows persistent deficits in social communication and interaction and restricted patterns of behavior, interest, or activities. For a more in-depth exploration of these, check out my video on Is Catwoman Autistic? Another shameless plug. Autism symptoms can manifest in a huge variety of ways. That's why it's considered a spectrum. Some people are super sensitive to sensory stimuli, while others are non-reactive to those same stimuli. Some are non-verbal and don't speak, while others are hyperlexic and learn to speak and read at an exceptionally young age. Some can't read emotional expressions on faces. Others learn to be experts that can discriminate subtle changes in facial expression that most people wouldn't notice. One of the problems in autism diagnosis is that the symptoms are so broad. Well, what does the science tell us about the relationship between autism and intelligence? The simple answer is, autism does not tell you much about someone's intelligence. But wait, don't turn off the video now. The more nuanced answer is really interesting, I promise. Nuance. Please stick around. This is important because there are stereotypes out there that autism is associated with intellectual disability, which promotes misunderstanding and stigma associated with autism spectrum diagnosis. There's a number of ways we can think about how autism might be related to intelligence. One distinction we can make is the difference between intelligence and adaptive functioning. Now, adaptive functioning refers to behaviors related to personal independence, things like home living skills, community navigation, self-care, socialization, communication. So why is it that autistic individuals may test high in intelligence, yet underperform in daily life? Autistic individuals may find everyday tasks overwhelming, especially those that require disruption of routines, sensory challenges, or social interaction. You may be smart enough to know what needs to happen, but if you find doing it overwhelming, then you might underperform compared to a neurotypical individual of equal intelligence. Think of it this way. You might be able to deduce why your car won't start, maybe even more effectively than a neurotypical person. But if you find it daunting to make the phone call to the mechanic, you might have more difficulties getting it fixed. In fact, this may be what people mean really when they talk about book smarts versus street smarts. Now, if that's true, that would mean street smarts are not really about smarts at all, but instead about managing these other skills. Autistic individuals may get passed over for promotions at work because they aren't as adept at social networking or self-promotion. They may have trouble knowing how and where to meet new people, making dating and friendships a challenge. They may have a hard time keeping up with which bills get paid when and miss a payment by mistake, not because they don't have any money, but then that requires phone calls to clear up or they might encounter a situation that doesn't have a clear solution. So they push it off until later and then it becomes a problem. Worst case scenario, they experience something called autistic burnout in which they just stop doing anything because they need to process and recharge. In this way, autistic individuals may struggle in spite of being very, very smart. Research has shown that as the gap between IQ and adaptive functioning increases, so does the risk of developing psychological disorders like anxiety and depression. 
This makes a lot of sense to me. You know you're really smart, but somehow you aren't getting the recognition or attention you deserve. That sounds like a recipe for depression. Okay, so what can neuroscience tell us about autism and intelligence? One approach to this question has been to look at which brain areas are different between autistics and neurotypicals. A summary of these lines of work would be that there are anatomical differences between these groups, especially related to the thickness of the cortex and overall increases in connectivity in autistic brains. A potential explanation for this is that as an autistic child develops, the brain compensates for any deficits in other areas by forming stronger connections in new places. This would result in an overall more interconnected brain. From this view, autism can cause higher IQs. Another perspective points the arrow of causation in the other direction. It suggests that high IQ scores cause the autism symptoms. Bernard Crespi collected a wealth of evidence supporting this hypothesis, of which I'll share some highlights. There's no single gene for intelligence, there are many. It's what we call a polygenic trait. Poly as in many, genic as in genes. However, many of these genes for intelligence, they're also genes that predict autism. Four huge studies including genes of over 5,000 people, have shown that autism-associated genes are associated not just with IQ, but also things like college attendance and educational attainment. These genes no doubt contribute to some of the differences in brain development and connectivity reported above. Based on his observations, Crespi proposed that autism may actually be best considered a disorder of high intelligence. Basically, your brain has to make trade-offs between being good at focusing and attending to details versus the big overarching picture. Sort of how you might focus the beam of a flashlight to get a small but bright light, or widen it to get a wide but dimmer light. If you get too focused, like a laser, you sacrifice some abilities to process the big picture. And that's what autism is like. You get overwhelmed by all that sensory input, but you can process those details easily. Conversely, if you cast the beam too wide, you find yourself in the psychotic affective spectrum with disorders such as schizophrenia. According to this idea, autism is intelligence out of balance to the point that it causes problems in other areas. Why then would people think of autism as a disorder of intelligence such that college textbooks might even make the mistake of putting it in the intelligence chapter as an intellectual disability? While it's true that intellectual disabilities are diagnosed in higher proportions among autistic individuals, there are some serious issues with how we arrive at that statistic. First, think of who gets diagnosed. If you have an autistic toddler that is hyperlexic, meaning they have high verbal ability and can already start to read, speaks like a grown-up, and talks all the time such that you can hardly get a word in edgewise, you might not think there's anything to diagnose you may not catch on to the fact that they fail to follow the back and forth, the give and take of typical conversation. On the contrary, if your child is almost or totally nonverbal, you're likely to notice a problem and delayed verbal skills is one of the top signs they look for when screening for autism. Second, if you have a child that is high IQ, you might be less inclined to bring them in to get tested for anything in the first place. Lower IQ might be something that brings children in for a battery of assessments, thereby leading to the discovery of autism. Now, think of when they get diagnosed. IQ tests are hard to administer to very young children in the first place, and nonverbal autistic kids might even be untestable. This might lead to an incorrect conclusion that they are intellectually impaired. In fact, a Canadian research group recently compared autistic and neurotypical preschoolers on conventional IQ tests, as well as nonverbal IQ tests where the kids had to do things like detect patterns in a series of pictures and pick the one that comes next, or find a target stimulus among a bunch of distractors, sort of similar to Where's Waldo. On the conventional tests, the neurotypical kids performed better on average than autistic kids, as you'd expect. However, when tested on the nonverbal tasks, the autistic kids performed just as well as the neurotypicals. In fact, on the visual search task, they often performed better. As another caveat, 
We're constantly learning and improving how we define and understand the symptoms of autism. For this reason, it matters to pay attention to when the research was conducted. Prior to 1994, Asperger's syndrome, which is a flavor of autism, was not a diagnosis available in the DSM, and until 2013, it was considered a separate disorder. Now this matters because Asperger's tend to be high IQ, so higher IQ autistic individuals may have been siphoned off into a different diagnosis. Add to that the lag between when these changes are made versus when they are generally accepted by researchers and practitioners, and you've got to look at the research with a keen eye towards who the actual population was in any given study. Anyway, the take home message is this. Autism is not a disorder of low intelligence. In fact, there's some evidence that it may be the opposite, a disorder of high intelligence. At any rate, there are autistic individuals who have high IQs and some who have low IQs, just like neurotypical individuals. Knowing someone is autistic tells you almost nothing about their intelligence. Instead, it has to do with a set of challenges related to sensory processing and social interaction with substantial individual differences among autistic individuals. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button. Consider subscribing to stay in the loop on all things psychology, and until next time, keep thinking.